I mean, I mean it's just, it's remarkable. I mean, it, it, Jesus warned us ahead of time so that we wouldn't be offended and so that we would know and recognize the things that are going on. This is why we have to be really careful about the trumpet that's giving an indistinct sound, an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for the battle. Then they use, not only do they not expose things, but they use the overlapping language so that it's kind of like, you know, well, what do we, gee, I thought I heard Wayne Dyer say that. Oh, was that Oprah? Oh, that was Rick Warren. You know, it's like, oh, oh, they must all be on the same page. Are they on the same? I mean, you can get really confused if you're not reading your Bible carefully. The Truth Project that uh, Dobson's group has out now is, is going all over the world, and they talk about Darwinian evolution. They don't even address spiritual evolution, and they're talking about unio mystica, and he actually calls this box that supposedly contains the godless evolution, he calls it you know, the cosmic cube. Well, cosmic is another word that's an overlap with the New Age cosmic consciousness. So again, we're not talking about the very obvious blasphemy that's going on right in front of our noses. Uh, Neil Donald Walsh, remember, co co founder of the Global Renaissance Alliance that morphed into the Peace Alliance, and the Peace Alliance is the one that's got this legislation. So, all of these legislatures probably think that they're furthering the cause of peace, but they're doing it on a New Age platform and they don't realize it. Okay? I, what I did on this particular page, you can go to it in uh, reinventingjesuschrist.com. All of the New Age channelers that were either channeling Christ or God. Everything I'm reading here is coming supposedly from Christ or God. Um, and the one, oh, here it is. Separation is hatred. Let us, this is Maitreya. Let us together show the world that the need for war is past, that the instinct of man is to live and to love, that hatred is begotten of separation. And what does Marianne Williamson say? We need to find the root cause of hatred. What's the root cause of hatred? not seeing that you are divine and that everyone else is divine. Hubbard's, Barbara Marx Hubbard's Christ says, your triumph over Satan, that is over the illusion of separation, will be a victory for the universal community. That's a victory over anyone who stands in Jesus Christ as savior. Victory on the cross of Calvary, redeeming us from our sins. Separation is sin. Whoa, separation is sin. This is my tray again. I shall drive from this earth forever the curse of hatred. Hatred is begotten of separation, the sin of separation. So separation isn't very well liked by these Christs and gods that are coming through these channelers. I wonder why. <laughs> they don't like the cross very much because why? Because Satan was defeated on the cross as was death and sin. That's why when we sing victory in Jesus, there was a victory. Separation is a crime. Maitreya again, the crime of separation must be driven from this world. I affirm that as my purpose. Maitreya likes the word purpose a lot. I'm telling you, Maitreya hasn't gone away. Benjamin Krem hasn't gone away. I'm not saying that he's the Antichrist, but he hasn't gone away. And he dovetails. What I noticed after September 11th is that Maitreya and what he believes dovetails with Marianne Williamson and The Course in Miracles and Neil Donald Walsh and Wayne Dyer. And it doesn't matter you know, if you're you know, reading Shirley MacLaine, uh, whether you're doing horoscopes, whether you're a Scientologist, the bottom line, the simplicity is the lie that God is in everyone and everything. That's why I was so concerned when I saw that Rick Warren had said, using a new translation for Ephesians 4, 6, that God Rules everything, is everywhere, and is in everything. Now this is interesting. His apologist stepped forward and said, in 1997, Rick Warren said that, you know, that uh, God in everything is pantheism. Okay. Oh, that's supposed to just take care of it. The question would be, well, if he said that in 1997, five years later, why is he writing it in the Purpose Driven Church? You know, the standard line is when you start to ask questions, too many questions about the emerging church or the Purpose Driven, you know, I've heard it time and time again, the pastor says, well, you know, we've really appreciated that you've been in this church, Marge, for 57 years, you and your husband, I know you've basically built the church, but maybe you ought to go somewhere else. I mean, talk to Noah Hutchings at Southwest Radio Church, he gets all that stuff. Anyway, that's probably enough on se separation and oneness. Watch that, you know, watch the, the nomenclature. There are some serious problems with the shack. Okay, let's look at some basic teachings that are in the shack, but first of all, I need to read you something because this is really significant with the shack. Those of you that are talking to uh, people about the shack. 
And, and I want to preface this because a lot of times people will say, hey, don't get so uptight. It's just a novel. You've probably heard that one. It's just a novel. Well, listen to this. This woman, her name is Dina Brem. She says, I had already come to believe all the radically dangerous teachings within this book. So it mostly confirmed what I already believed, but it most definitely highlighted the reality that I don't yet know how much God loves me. I want the relationship with God that I see in Paul Young's life. He's just allowing Jesus as he leads. Then she says, this was the first book I read straight through four times. First to absorb it, secondly to underline it, third to highlight, fourth to put headers on the top of each page so that I could find certain passages again. It's become my new systematic theology handbook. Real conversations with God. Paul Young said that he was gonna call this book Conversations with God, but he found out another author had already used that title, Neil Donald Walsh. He just, like no big deal, well somebody else used that title. Yeah, a guy that was blaspheming Jesus in the name of God, saying that God told him these things. You know, used to be we'd, we, you know, we would see Christian leaders would say, you know, He's a false prophet, you know? He's not speaking for God, you know? They're saying, thus saith the Lord, and that's, that's, that completely contradicts what's in Scripture. You just, nobody does that. Everybody's just really polite. We're supposed to be respectful and nice, but, you know, when it comes to the truth, you know, the Bereans, Paul encouraged the Bereans and was glad. On page 112, Jesus tells Mackenzie Allen Phillips, map, God, who is the ground of all being, dwells in and around and through all things. So there it is, God in everything. I actually read the shack, and when I saw that, that was it. You don't need to know anything else. I mean, God in everything. I wrote an article called The Shack and Its New Age Leaven. It's online. You can look it up. You can use it. It talks about, you know, Robert Schuller in November 2003 on the Hour of Power said, Exactly what as, below, as above, so below says in the message, as above, so below is at the beginning of the secret. It, it, Robert Schuller said, my faith has become broader than ever. I thought that was an interesting way of putting it when Jesus said the way is narrow and few there be that find it. If you ever think you're like you're really lonely and you know, like everybody else seems to be getting it, the way is broad that leads to destruction, Matthew 7. You know, the way is narrow. And you're starting to be able to see how this is really taking place. It really is a narrow way and few there be that find it. Is that because we think we're so special or exclusive? No, it just means we're holding on to the truth and a lot of people aren't. They're making it look like we're already God, we're already the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be born again. If you're born again, it's just by awakening to that inner God, that inner Christ. So Walsh says, but when an energy unit such as yourself such as yourself sees itself as not part of the system at all, but as a product of the system, the life form has created an illusion. God says, oh, and then Walsh says, and then along comes chaos theory and quantum physics. God says, yes, and quantum physics is simply, everybody's talking about quantum physics. PBS, I just was sent a program. It was called Fractals, Hunting the Hidden Dimension. Fractals, fractals, fractals. You're gonna hear more about fractals. Where is this all going? Uh, well, I think it's going right where the Bible said it would. Um, we're going into where, if, it's, if it were possible, even the, the elect would be deceived. The whole world would be deceived. And when Jesus returns, will he find faith on the earth? Well, the way it's going, I mean, aren't you some of, some of you just amazed that the people that you love and respect are, are reading the shack and thinking it's really good? In the, in the shack, it says that Jesus is the best way, the best way. Now, excuse me, Jesus said, I am the way, John 14, 6. But here is the cross, the hope of mankind, the only you'll find. 